we're going to build our own pedometer smartphone app using Thunkable. First, let's take a look at what we're building. Our app counts our steps as we walk. And we also have the ability to reset and start all over again. Let's get to developing. Let's start by logging into Thunkable using a Google account. Let's create a new app. We're going to call it Walk This Way, upper camel case, no spaces, and press OK. Now it's time to design our app using the designer. First, let's change the name to include spaces. And let's change the title of our screen to Walk This Way. And let's give the background color some flair. I'm going to change mine to amber. Nice. Now it's time to work on our layout. Drag a vertical arrangement onto the screen. And then rename it to Vertical Top. Align it vertically center. And give it the background color of none. The height is fill parent. The width is fill parent. Looks great. Time for another. Drag another vertical arrangement onto the screen. Call this one vertical middle and press OK. Let's align it center vertical. The height should be fill parent and our width is fill parent as well. One more. Grab another vertical arrangement, put it on the bottom of the screen. Rename to vertical bottom. Align vertically to the center as well. Fill parent for height. Fill parent for width. And we're looking good. We're going to be placing a horizontal arrangement within our top vertical arrangement. Let's rename it to horizontal top. This is going to contain our labels. Go to user interface and choose label. Drag it within the horizontal top. And let's rename it to label step count. Let's change the font size, 60. The font typeface, Roboto Regular. And let's change our text label to zero. Let's grab another label. Now you will fight with this, just like I do. The best thing to do is just to put it in the arrangement you want and then move it later. So in my case, I'm gonna move label step count to the left. Rename this new label, Label Steps. Let's change our font size, 60. Our font face, Turbato Thin. And our label is going to be Steps, all lowercase. We're gonna be including the image of a sneaker in the middle of our app. So go back to the course shell and download the blue sneaker image that I provided for you. We're gonna be uploading that in the bottom of the designer. You can select file or simply drag it in. Press OK. Now we're gonna be adding an image component to the horizontal middle. So drag that in. Excellent. Let's rename it to image sneaker and press OK. Let's change our width to 50% and press OK. Let's go back and let's assign it our blue sneaker picture. There you go. Now it's time to go get a label. Once again, we want to put this in the vertical middle below the sneaker, but we're going to fight with it. So we're just going to put it in where it lets us and then move things from there. Excellent. Let's rename this label. Label info. Roboto Thin for the font, and for the width, 50%, and press OK. Now it's time to update the label. Strive for 10,000 steps each day to stay healthy. Looks great. Center the text. Now it's time for our button. Find a button under User Interface and drag it into Vertical Bottom. This is going to be our reset button, so let's rename it. Button, reset, and press OK. 
background color. Uh, I'm going to choose cyan. I'm going to make this bold, font size 20, font face, Roboto regular. Let's do a 50% width and press OK. Now it's time to update the text for our button. We're going to have it say reset, all uppercase. We're almost done with our design. The last thing we need is a non-visible component called pedometer. Go to sensors and find the pedometer component and drag it to the screen. You'll notice that it puts it below under non-visible components. With our design in place, now it's time to program. Go to blocks. Let's find our screen and let's find the event when screen is initialized. When the screen's initialized, we want to start our pedometer. So find the pedometer and find the start action and drag that in to the block. Now let's write the code that responds to the reset button being clicked. Find button reset and find its click event. And drag it onto the stage. When the reset button is clicked, we want to reset our pedometer. So find the pedometer and find its reset action and drag it into the block. Whenever this happens, we want to reset our step count label. So go to label step count and find where you can set the text. Under math, you'll be able to find the numbers. We want it to be zero, so that works for us. Snap that in. And last but not least, we need to restart that pedometer. So choose the start action. The last thing we need to do is with each step, we need to update our label. Go to pedometer, find the simple step event. Go back and find label step count. We want to set this text label with every step. Snap that in and then choose simple step. This will update our app with the number of steps with every step we take. That's all it takes. There's multiple ways to test an app using Thunkable. If you want, you can use Thunkable Live, but it requires that you have the Thunkable app on your smartphone. To install it, just search for Thunkable and follow the prompts. Keep in mind that Thunkable Live may not work in your school environment. Thunkable Live requires that your smartphone and the device you're developing on are on the same network. This is seldom the case when you're at school. To test your app, go to the test menu and click Thunkable Live. From your smartphone, enter in or scan the QR code. Then you'll be able to test your app as you build it. Looks like my app is doing really well. I don't like that there's not space between my step count and my step count label. I think I want to change that. With Thunkable Live, that's no problem whatsoever. Any change I make in the designer updates on the app immediately. So I'm going to go to the designer, find my steps label, and I'm going to put a space in the front. Click away. And when I go back to my smartphone app, it should reflect this change automatically. There it is. It's that simple. So this is a great way to test. All right. Now let's publish and deploy to a real smartphone. Go to apps and let's save it. Save app. Now we need to export it. Save as an APK to your computer. When an Android application is built, it's called an Android package or APK file. I'm going to put mine in my code directory on my flash drive and save it. Now we need to go to FileZilla. Using the username, host, and password information I've provided, you need to log in. On the left are your local files, so navigate to wherever you saved your APK. I put mine on my flash drive, so I need to go find it. There it is. Remember, if you want to be able to access your file on the internet, it must be placed below the public HTML directory. To do so, just drag it to the right. This will transfer the file to the remote class web server. Once your Android application or APK file is hosted on the internet, you'll be able to download and install it on a smartphone device. Make sure your security settings allow you to install apps from unknown sources. Then go to your class website and download the Android application you wish to install. Follow the prompts to install it. Now it's time to test. Launch your app and make sure it works as intended. Great job.